All right, hello everybody. Today we're gonna do a transvenous pacer from beginning to end. This is a six French cordis. I'm gonna put the six French cordis in. We're gonna make the assumption that the viewers know how to put in a cordis. Now, the next step is to take the wire here and make sure these are attached. So this is a, uh, these little extra connectors. You wanna make sure they're attached really tightly. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna attach a uh, alligator clamp to the distal uh, terminal, and this is gonna go to lead D1. And you're gonna be looking for an injury pattern. And the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna test out your balloon, make sure that your balloon has integrity, because you do not wanna put a uh, broken balloon into somebody's heart because you'll just be injecting air into their right ventricle. And then you're gonna insert, and what you're gonna do is you wanna insert this to 20. And the reason why you're inserting this to 20 is simply to be outside of this length of this catheter so you don't explode your balloon. So there you are, you'll be at 20. Now, the thing that you don't wanna forget is the sheath. Now, this is the sheath right here, and if you inserted this whole thing without the sheath, then you'll have to repeat the whole, whole process all over again. So this goes all the way on first, and that's why I think it's really important when you're doing this, even if you're a master and you put in a hundred of these, to do a checklist so that somebody else is reading off to you. Make sure that you remember the sheath. So we'll insert this to 20, and that's 10. That's 20 is two lines. That's 30, that's 40. And then once you get to 20, like that, you inflate the balloon. That's why I like this mannequin, because you can actually see it. So you inflate the balloon and you say balloon up, and you lock it. That's what this thing here is for, is to lock it. And as you can see, there's an inflated balloon, and you're looking for signs of injury, which is this large QRS. So you advance, 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 advance. And if you get to the point where you're like at 50 or 60, and you're not seeing anything, then you have to deflate the balloon like that, and pull all the way back to 20. Then you advance again. So, in balloon up, and then advance, 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 advance. Oh, okay, I see an injury pattern. So I'm gonna deflate the balloon, and always deflate the balloon once you're uh, where you need to be because all the balloon is is a sail, and you lock it. And then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take this off of the distal portion, and you're gonna attach both of these to your generator. Now, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm gonna keep this off because I don't wanna shock myself, you want this component to be attached into the V portion of it. So I'm taking that off. And then what you do is, is you'll see positive and negative. Proximal goes into positive, distal goes into negative. And then this will be attached. And what you want to see, if you're in the right spot, if you're at the right ventricle, is that once you turn this on, you adjust it so that it's a DVI mode. So this goes all the way down to zero, and this one goes all the way up to 25. And hopefully you'll see a paced rhythm. If you don't, you have to refloat it. And then if you do see a paced rhythm, that suggests electrical capture. You check a pulse to make sure you have mechanical capture. If you have mechanical capture, then you just turn down until you lose capture. Just say we lose it 10, and then you multiply that by two and a half. So this goes all the way back up to 25. And now that you have that, you have to be very careful with your sheath. So what you do is you lock your sheath. So you, you hold on to your tip here because you don't wanna lose your sheath. So I'm gonna just gently pop that open and I'm gonna hold it like that. And I'm gonna make sure I don't lose it. I'm gonna push the, the, uh, the bottom part of the sheath on and then I'm gonna hold this as I pull it all the way to here. I'm gonna get to here and I'm gonna lock it. And that way once you're locked here, this whole thing is in, intact. So now I have a completed transvenous pacer, and if, God forbid, I were to ever lose capture, let's just say now that I'm completely sterile, I lose capture, I can ensure my balloon's down, I'll turn my, uh, my, my current all the way back up, and then I can always pull back, and I won't have to complete the whole procedure again because I have the sheath and advance. Hopefully that's helpful.